What's up, guys? We're back with another Method Monday. We are giving insight into the wide world of strength progressions, hopefully helping you connect some dots by looking at all of the different ways that we can arrange strength training to get a positive result. I gotta give a shout out to Barbell Apparel. Not only is their support the reason this channel can exist, but they have the best clothing on the market. Check out, please, the Bromley Barbell Apparel collaboration shirts. We got Brick by Brick with the puppy logo for all you jacked puppies out there. And we also got, I'm really proud of the Gorilla logo, Strength Conquers. It is a throwback to the first shirts I ever made at my gym, Empire Barbell. I'm a big fan of how that design came out and we're looking to put out more designs in the future. So please check those shirts out, barbellapparel.com slash Alexander Brom. Now we're going to cover the frequency method today. And I've gotten a lot of questions about frequency specifically because we put a lot of attention into things like volume and intensity and training to failure. How many total sets should we be doing? What exercises should we focus on? There's so many options to arrange your training. Those are the things we often get fixated on. In looking at the frequency model of progressing, it becomes evident that there's this dimension that's missing from that discussion because what we're going to cover is purely focused on how you progress. It's that dimension of time, not just what do I do today? It doesn't care about what's optimal right now. It's just about getting you in the door, getting you doing something, some baseline of work, and then progressing that evenly over time. And when people get so fixated on what the most optimal amount of volume is, or what the most optimal number of lifts is, they treat it almost as if there's one static prescription for training that should never change, that you should just do that because that's the most optimal thing. And the thing is that puts such a tight barrier around your training and defining what your training has to be that when you do get stagnant or when it is time to change something, you don't have a lot of different places that you can move to. And it can make it very difficult to try to break past that. So this example, you might recognize this from Johnny Payne of strength villain fame. He's responsible for the Grayscale LP, which I'm a big fan of. And this type of method, he actually doesn't recommend separately, but in conjunction with the barbell stuff. This is primarily used, or he recommended it for things like body weight movements, push-ups, pull-ups, and the idea is that we can adapt to this greater amount of volume, that we can increase our capacity, handle more work, and not only are we not going to be worse for it, keep that in mind. The idea is not that we're going to be worse for going beyond the absolute minimum amount of fucking work that we can do and still grow. It's that we're, we're actually going to be better for it. We're going to be more adapted, more useful. We'll have a tolerance to more work. And overall, that's going to mean a better, stronger, more useful us. And I tend to agree. So because of the nature of this method, the way it progresses throughout the day, it's best used for things, one, that you can do on the fly, no matter where you are. Body weight stuff is great. I think grip stuff is good too. I have an example for using something like a gripper and things that are not so easy to load the same way you would progress a barbell or a, or a machine or something like that. So push-ups and pull-ups, we tend to be stuck with our body weight. So it's tricky to load that. We can't just add weight usually in a very, uh, in a very calculated way. Even if we use weight vests and stuff, our body weight fluctuates. There's a lot of things that go into that. Also with things like grippers, usually you just have your gripper and there's a big jump into the next one. So you have to figure out how to use that one amount of resistance in order to create a stress that you can build off of and get stronger so you can eventually make that jump. So this is really good for that. So the main idea, assuming that we are working with one load, one fixed amount of weight, we're gonna start by establishing a maximum amount of reps. So in this example, pull-ups. Let's say I can knock off 12 pull-ups. If I'm lucky on a good day, 12 pull-ups. Well, I'm going to cut that in half. So I take 50% of that 12, that's six for five sets, and I spread it throughout the day. So maybe when I wake up in the morning, maybe around lunchtime, you know, maybe before I go to bed, I'm just sprinkling it through the day. It doesn't matter how I spread it. The idea is just that it's not concentrated. I'm not going for fatigue. I'm not going for uh, training to failure. I'm not trying to get those sets to take me closer to failure. I am actually prioritizing clean, crisp, fast, confident reps. That's the goal. We are doing skill development here. And what I'm going to do is add a set every day. So starting at five, I'm going to go up, up, up. So the total amount of work is going to increase. My total frequency throughout the day is going to increase. And this is a really good way to utilize more frequent sessions as a means of getting yourself to adapt to more work and thus progress forward. Now, the reason it works, it does what we call greasing the groove. By doing the same movement over and over, we develop task-specific skill, so we become more efficient. 
By becoming more efficient, we can do more work. By doing more work, we expose ourselves to more stress. The cycle continues. But don't be fooled. Don't think that this is some trick to just arbitrarily be a little more efficient at a particular movement so it seems like we're stronger when we're not. This is absolutely true blue strength gains. This allows you to move a weight through space more times than you could before. And that translates over to everything else. Also, when you look at, let's say an Olympic lifter, very, very skill dependent lifts, all of their work, it's not done uh, around what is the best workout I can get today. How do I, is it training to failure, getting the most amount of mechanical tension? Am I, am I trying to just do that one money set and then shut it down and go home? Absolutely not. They're doing frequency. They're doing a lot of work throughout the day, a lot of quick, fast, light touches to refine their technique, and they're doing that throughout the week. And the total calculation of work throughout the week is a stress they look at and they can manipulate that higher low to get more growth or more recovery works the exact same way here. The example I have here, let's just say you're using a Captive Crush gripper. And let's say I can bang out the number one for eight reps. These are a great way to train your grip. I got a link in the description. If you're interested in Iron Mind's grip stuff, it's just absolutely fantastic. These are a really great way to get your grip stronger. Grippers are a fantastic tool. It's just very few people use them right. So you're not going to want to attack it necessarily like you would a regular workout. If you can carry it around with you, have it in your car, have it in your desk at work, what you can do is utilize a method like this to increase your tolerance to work build your skill with it, get those neurological adaptations, and then that's going to carry forward to more size, more strength down the road. So let's say I can knock out eight reps with the number one, but the number two, substantially heavier than the number one. So how do I progress? Well, with the frequency method, let's say on Monday, five sets of four, that's what I'm starting with. Half of the eight reps I can do. So at no point do I even need to warm up. I can click off four really good crisp reps and not think twice about it spread out throughout the day the idea is that i'm fresh doesn't matter you don't have to block out specific times just at least some substantial amount of time in between your efforts now as every day goes by i add one so on tuesday i do an extra spot let's say at 11 a.m right there then i repeat that wednesday adding another spot let's say at seven then i do it thursday let's say first thing when i wake up so i'm doing eight runs on thursday so this is something that always just makes my head hurt when it comes to the high intensity goons where they're like, oh, well, volume's better. Why not do a billion sets? Why not spend every waking moment of your life doing this? There is always, 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 no matter what you're doing, a practical cap. That argument kind of pretends that we don't recognize that there has to be like a period of recovery to grow. It would be just like if I looked at the high intensity lunatics and said, oh, you only want one set to maximize recovery. How about no set? Just get all the recovery. It is the exact same argument. It's absolute nonsense. There is always going to be a practical cap on what you're doing because eventually it's too much time out of the day it's too much energy expended eventually the the balance of stress to recovery flips and you have to to twist it around and that can happen with any mode of training that you're doing so with this one you can put a practical cap at eight sets i think eight to ten sets is actually what johnny Payne recommended but the idea just like any other double progression we've ever done when you reach a practical limit of the one thing that you're increasing eventually you hit a wall you have to drop it back and reset so there's two variables that you're turning if you're adding reps you add reps until you hit a crescendo and then you drop the reps back and then add weight and then repeat double progression there's two variables so here we're increasing frequency up to a point then we get to that crescendo we drop back on friday and now we're doing five reps at this point five reps should not be a problem it's still sub maximal it's still well below that maximum number of eight so you can see that the time it takes to build up the day the frequency throughout the day gives you ample time it's almost a form of step loading in that way so you see how you get through five sixes sevens eventually you're knocking out sets of eight multiple times throughout the day and then it isn't long before you hit your first set of nine and it's for five total sets throughout the day so it is a great way to approach this the body weight stuff is really cool too because pull-ups and push-ups tend to not really stress you as much anybody can do push-ups even if they're relatively heavy for you your ability to recover from body weight movements uh, is pretty high so you should be able to train it especially sub max another benefit of utilizing sub max work it doesn't wreck you for everything else that you're doing so 
Another reason why having an understanding of all of these variables and all of the trade-offs is very important because it gives you a tool in your belt when you have to solve a specific problem. There are times where you're gonna to wanna to focus all your effort, training to failure, the hard stuff on one particular thing, and you can absolutely include work for other stuff that's submaximal, that doesn't require the same demand, that allows you to fit in that extra work in conjunction without taking away from everything. So this is the frequency method. I'm a big fan of this. Use it to increase your capacity on body weight stuff. Use it if you're struggling, if you are trying to get your first pull-ups. And again, grip work, it's a great application. You could absolutely use this for other stuff and it will still work. It's just a matter of, do you have the equipment available and can you commit to getting those daily touches out? Also understand, this can be condensed. You could do some of these closer together, 20, 30 minutes in between, and maybe spread it out throughout the day where it is more uh, more doable with all of the obligations that you have throughout the day. So keep that in mind. So this is the frequency method, guys. Let me know what you think. Have you used something like this in the past? Have you had success with it? If so, let us know for what. Let us know what your growth was like. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.